Total War Troy is actually becoming something cool. I never thought I'd say that in my life. Total War Saga's Troy, Creative Assembly's last game that came out, and well, it's safe to say it wasn't exactly their most successful. People were complaining about the fact that this game was supposedly trying to be a historical title in the Total War franchise, yet leaned very much into the mythology area. But it never went fully one side or the other. They were stuck in this middle ground where they were trying to be realistic, make interpretations of things like minotaurs, and saying, hey, they're probably just guys in big bear suits, not actual minotaurs. But then they had things like Hector and Achilles being massive heroes that could take on multiple units on their own and the fan base was thinking what is it is it historical or is it fantasy no one quite knows and because of that middle ground it didn't do so well not only did it release for the first 12 months on epic games only with no multiplayer for the first few months of that but even when it came out on steam there's been no fanfare there's been nothing incredible going on about it and the talk of the town has not been towed to war troy it's been where do they go next how do they revive themselves from the last few games in the franchise that haven't had the best reception from fans but it seems like creative assembly are starting to listen well, Whilst I think a lot of people in the past have been a bit wayward about where they're going, especially some big names in the community such as Pixelated Apollo, who I was lucky enough to get down to do an interview with the other day, make sure you go and check that out, link in the description. He spoke about how he was a massive fan of the Total War games, that's what he built his channel on, but he just can't bring himself to play the newer ones because of this mishmash. Whether they're going for that historical or fantasy, he doesn't care, but he doesn't want them to be stuck in the middle with something like Three Kingdoms or Total War Troy. I actually have a video coming out tomorrow of his full breakdown of what he dislikes about the newer games especially Troy so make sure you stick around the channel for that so subscribe if you haven't already but this is where Creative Assembly have stepped up they have really turned the tide here with a new announcement of their Mythos DLC for Total War Troy and even I saw this being skeptical thinking great they've just released another DLC haven't they but no this one seems quite different this one seems like it could be onto something so what is the Mythos DLC well it's bringing in a complete refresh of what you know from the game Toad to War Troy at this point in time. It's basically a new game. This is what I think they should have done from the start and this is what I think so many other people really wanted them to do from the beginning. Not try and present Total War Troy as a historical based game but really lean fully into mythology. Not slightly with just a few heroes and a few romanticized game moments and mechanics but fully into the mythology of Troy, into ancient Greek legends and this is what the Mythos DLC is doing. It's turning the game into into what I think everybody wanted it from the beginning. The campaign has new mythos mode that is added, and you guessed it, it goes all out on the legends of Greek history. Bringing in, of course, what we had before of those heroes of Hector, Paris, Achilles, Agamemnon, but also going to the next level. Not just hinting at the gods, not just hinting at pleasing these mythological beings, but just throwing it in your face, not even trying to hide it anymore, with four new monsters, myths, and legends within the game. There's a new monster selection button added into the campaign, Pain, which gives the player three new mission paths that they can choose to go down unless they want to just carry on doing the sandbox thing that you always kind of do. These three mission paths gives the player the opportunity to hunt some of the most legendary monsters in Greek mythology. They can hunt the griffin who is the king of all the griffins. You can hunt Cerberus, the three-headed gods that guards the gates of hell, and of course the Hydra. Yes, you heard me. You can go all out Garydos on this game now. You have to send out search parties to try and find one of these three monsters. They will then get back to you with sort of missions and pop-ups that you can complete. One of the missions or pop-ups that came up within this bit of gameplay that was shown is they needed a bit of help. Your search party were a bit lost, so you recruited a centaur party to come and join you in order to help you find this hydra that was being hunted. You then go into battle with the hydra who will be guarded by mythological shades and beasts, but if you defeat them and you take down the great hydra, he then joins you, joins your army, and he is under your control. And this is what shocked me, and this is what made me want to make this video because to me this just looks like Total War Warhammer. It's some fantasy game that I think they did fantastically, just leaning into the full fantasy and not trying to add realism into it, not trying to appease both sides of the Total War fandom, but just being confident in what they want to do and what they know. 
show. The animations of this Hydra look fantastic. You can tell the inspiration from games like Warhammer 2 and hopefully in the future Warhammer 3. Once you complete these missions and the monsters have joined your party, you'll also get some special buildings that you can then recruit in order to buff and help your monster grow and become more powerful or even new troops. For example, when you recruit the Hydra, you get some of the bodyguards, the shades that then can be recruited into the army. And this brings me on to some of the minor monsters that Total War Troy has now been added in with this Mythos DLC. These minor monsters can be recruited as you would expect in any Total War game, having the right infrastructure and buildings in order to recruit them into your army. Things like Hydra Priests that you will find defending the Hydra as well, but then can later join your squad. And they will bring in things like full magic spells, whether it's poisons, explosions, the sort of thing that you've known from Total War Warhammer. Centaurs, as I mentioned before, full legions with half horse riding troops. Harpies, they are actually having harpies on the battlefield. These, of course, look a lot like some of the flying creatures from the Total War Warhammer game, but they have been brought into Troy that can once again be recruited into your army. And I'm sure there's so many more that we haven't seen from this gameplay yet. But never fear, this Mythos DLC keeps in some of the historical aspects, but not trying to mix it in with this fantasy side. The historical mode that they now have added in takes away any heroes. Wait, what's that doing there? Oh, I get it. I'm playing in mythological mode. So does that mean over in historical mode, everything is more realistic and armies are led by generals rather than buffed up heroes? Yep, guess so. Yes, you heard me. No Achilles, no Paris, no Agamemnon. They're not fighting on their own to the point they can take down unit after unit. You have generals, but like any Total War game from the past, where they're part of the army. They're involved in the troops and they have a general's bodyguard that are used much like you know and expect from games like Shogun, Rome Total War, and the like. And I'm so glad that they've managed to split it up. It's interesting to see if this is the way they're going to go for the future. We've seen it in Three Kingdoms and now we're seeing it in Troy. You have a game that first tried to mix fantasy and history, but then completely completely split them apart in two separate campaigns that do their own thing and they never really cross over. But will they carry on doing this? Are they going to make a game that has the possibility to be fantasy and history at the same time? Or have they learned from the criticism of Troy and Three Kingdoms and they're going to completely separate once again? Have a standalone full fantasy game that is only fantasy, it doesn't have a historical game mode, and then you bring out your historical title that is fully history that doesn't have a fantasy game mode or a romance option. Because whilst it's great that they're splitting these two things apart in Troy, they're still not able to focus on one over the other. The historical version of this campaign is not going to be as fully fleshed out and fully focused on as something you might expect from a Medieval 2 or Rome Total War. And the fantasy section of Troy isn't going to be once again as fleshed out or focused on as something you'd expect from the Warhammer titles, because they've put one game and they've split it into two mini games. And I'm not entirely sure if this is the way forward, but it looks like that's what Creative Assembly could be doing. Overall, I'm really happy with this DLC. I think it is a step in the right direction. Is it a redemption for Total War Troy and the decisions that Creative Assembly have made in the past? I don't quite think so yet. I think there's a lot of people that will be very skeptical about it and I think it's going to take a lot more convincing and a load more steps in this direction in order to get back to that massive high place they had in this strategy genre. Even Pixelated Apollo said in our interview, if Creative Assembly announced a Lord of the Rings standalone Total War at the moment, even he wouldn't care at this point, even though he's made his channel off Third Age and he was in love with that Lord of the Rings mod. And I think it is a thought that resonates a lot in the Total War fan base at the moment, that there's a lot that needs to be done in order to repair the last few years of Creative Assembly's reign in Total War. Whilst it is an amazing step forward, it is still a shame that this Mythos part is a DLC. It's still something that I assume is going to be paid and it comes out in September. Whilst it's great this is in the right direction, it is still a DLC. This is still something that Creative Assembly will be profiting off and it is not what they should have done. This should have been in the game at the start. This should have been Total War Troy. Why does this have to be coming in later? Okay, great. Better late than never, but it's almost as if they're trying to retrospectively make up for the mistakes and the backlash from the community and then still get money off it by putting in a DLC, which I understand because of development time and the cost that it takes to make this DLC, but it would have been better if this was the game. If this was what Total War Troy released as, and this is what people had, because there's no doubt in my mind that it would have a much better reception than what it did when it actually came out. But for now, Creative Assembly, you got me. I am going to reinstall Total War Sagas, Troy.